So I'm not sure how long ago that this node was introduced. Uh, it's been a while, but I can confidently say that up until now, I've never used the node. Uh, and it's the white noise node. Um, I didn't know what it was for. It's just a sheet of whiteness. So if you take it right here, you got the white noise node, just plug it straight into the principle. Now, this is a bad example, but notice the white noise pattern doesn't really show an obvious pattern. In fact, it's very, very small and very granular. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a couple examples of how I use it. It's kind of the same thing on each different one. Uh, so we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with EV and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. So here's the first example of how I used um, this note. If we go to the shading. So I have this loop, and I wanted to kind of make it look really washed out and very just kind of grainy, granular, whatever. And you'll notice right here, it almost looks like it's it's noisy. Notice that. Now, if we go to my node setup, how I created this whole thing, if we take off the white noise node, which is right here, these nodes create this right here, which is, it's just a noise texture. Basically, it's a, I did some other complicated stuff to give it animation, give it color, but it's very core. It is a noise texture right up here. You can see we can change the scale of things. You can change the detail or like uh, the distortion. So it's just one noise texture playing with some emission and transparency. But I wasn't happy with this. I wanted it to be a little bit more organic, a little bit less sharp in a way. So what you can do is I'll just go ahead and clear this out and show you what I did. I wanted to wash it out. I wanted to make it flat, grainy, you could put a noise texture on it that's like, like a thousand on the scale, but the white noise node helps me do this. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and get the white noise node, put it right there, and you'll notice what it does to the whole thing. Now, if there's something about this node setup that you want to see what I did, all of these project files are currently available on the Patreon. But again, it's just a noise texture with transparency, and then you use a noise texture for the color, if that makes any sense. But again, those files are available. So then I'll just go ahead and get a mix RGB and then an object node. Now, if you haven't seen my shading tutorials, you may not be familiar with what I just did, but essentially what this mix RGB is gonna allow you to do is to only use a small portion of this noise texture. So we're back to the original texture. We're back to the original texture. If I just give it a little bit, see how it washes it out. Now this is like full white noise. And then this is just a little white noise. And what this allows now is this really nice, bright and washed out look. Really just almost vintage in a way. Uh, but it makes it look kind of organic, kind of natural. Noise is very natural to look at. And so for this particular example, it gave it just a very unique look, that I, which is what I was really going for. Uh, so let me show you another really cool concept. So I had a friend of mine who wanted to create some chrome text. So here it is at its base, some chrome text. So I'm going to go to my camera settings and I'm going to get the, um, so actually go to the world settings and make it so that the camera can't see that world. So now all we have is Chrome text. Now he didn't want to bring up roughness because he was saying, how do I blur this HDRI? And he didn't want to bring up roughness. And so I said, just bring it up rough, right? He wanted to keep the metal sharp. So I said, all right, well then let's blur the HDRI. And so first off we wanted to make it colorful. So we'll add that here in the color ramp. Um, so we can bring this in to crunch that. So the, the whole idea was how can we get some really cool looking Chrome text? So first you get a color ramp and you crunch in those values so you get more, more negative space. Then you can go ahead and add colors. So I'm gonna add two colors here. So now we have our two colors with that color ramp. 
And then let's go ahead and do the same thing. Right here on this portion, we have this whole HDRI setup. We can go here to the white noise, add that white noise node. We add our mix RGB just like we originally did. And then check this out, I love this. You can bring this over. So now you have this really cool blurry chrome text look and of course the more factor you give it, the more blurry it's going to be. So see so you have this, just bring in just a little bit and it's gonna to start to blur that in this really, really cool way. And now you can kind of be selective, say, oh, that's too much contrast. Well, then just bring in more and that'll fade it out, give you a better gradient. And of course you can make the uh, HDRI brighter, maybe 10, boom. Now you have really cool options for Chrome text, just making it look awesome like that. So there you go, that's another example. Let's look at another one. So for this animation here, I also wanted to give it a really natural look. Just very grainy. So a lot, all these are the same exact thing. I'm just giving you other, other examples of how I'm using it. I know there are a lot of cool ways to use this node. And if you do know different ways to use the node, put it in the comments because I'm very curious how other people are using this. But notice this look. We'll go here to the shading and we'll go to the render. And if I take off that white, no white noise node, what you have Maybe go to the other one as well. If you take off that white noise node, what you have is this perfectly perfect wire. Now, see that in the node, which is a wave texture? Now this is cool, right? But sometimes the struggle in art is to make something look unique, make, looks, make something look cool. And that was the struggle here. So let's make it a little bit grainy. Bring that in a little bit. Now we have a much more natural looking material and it's not like obviously a wave texture. If you really know, uh, if you know shading, it is a noise, uh, wave texture. But in this case, it's, it's a more unique wave texture for this particular design. And again, if you want to see how I made this, it's up on Patreon. Uh, one more and then we'll be done. I'm really beating this point home. Um, but I want to show you one more really cool thing that I thought was fun with this. So what I did was I rendered out a video of these rings. So what we're looking at is just the MP4, the video. And then I thought, okay, I kind of want to make this look a little more unique. Let's put that video back into Blender. So I put it on a plane and then I put it on a image texture so that that video is now looping with an image texture. And let's do the same thing. Let's add a white noise node and let's just see if this does something even mildly interesting for the animation. It just gives it a little bit more uniqueness, gives me more something interesting to play with. So if we do that, it blurs it and you can blur it however much you want. Look how cool that is. It's just a little bit different than what you're normally able to do. And that's it. Now you have this really interesting almost load animation or if you do concert visuals or motion graphics, I think there's a lot of power here in doing something interesting, but that's how I'm using the white noise node. There is plenty of other ways to use this node, I'm sure. So put them in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys are doing there, but I thought this would be a really fun, simple video to kind of use. Uh, with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.